Hello everybody, my name is Travis and this is DevTips, a YouTube channel where we talk about website design and development and we have an extra awesome episode coming up. So every now and then I crawl out of the garage where I film this show and go and meet people. And last Wednesday was one of those times I was lucky enough to attend a Dribble.com meetup held at the Yahoo campus here in California. I met a ton of really awesome creatives, some who are doing design, some doing development, and some doing both. And this time I wanted to ask these creatives a very special question about how they got their start. Namely, what was that catalyst that set them upon the path of this creative lifestyle? Now to start us off, we have the co-founder of Dribble.com himself, Mr. Dan Cederholm. I'm Dan Cederholm, I'm the co-founder of Dribble, and I think the uh, inspiration for me getting into design was a couple different things. There was, uh, I was a musician, and I was really into music packaging, and uh, I was also into skateboarding, and the branding that goes along with that, and so I think throughout my whole life I was a designer and didn't really know it until the web came along. And the web kind of brought all these interests of mine together into one place and gave me a platform to, to create things on my own. And, and it sort of, I think it made, it made me realize that uh, anyone could be a designer if they want to be a designer and create things. And the computer made that, made that possible, made that easier for me. I think a lot of it is, is that I want to give back to the people that taught me. Like, I learned everything I, I know about design um, from, from the web and the community on the web. Um, and so I'm always uh, grateful for that and I want to give back to the next generation of, of people that are learning. And um, I've always thought that um, the web and the creative community online is, is kind of an amazing thing and that you can it's so supportive. People are are uh, sharing their knowledge freely, and I always respected that, and I always wanted to do the same. So that's why I'm uh, I'm involved in the design community now. So. I would say, uh, you know, don't don't be afraid to, to to design and call yourself a designer and do it. I think one of the things that tripped me up was that I always thought you needed to go to school for, you need to be specially trained, or you need a certain equipment to do it, or whatever. Um, and I always thought like design was just this thing that other these other people did, and, and it's not true. I think mean, you can apply this to anything in life, really, but. Um, just jumping into it and and, uh, and 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 experimenting and not and not worrying about the um, the product right away. Just start experimenting and do it and uh, yeah. Hey, my name is Sebastian, and how I got into design was by having this urge since I was little to organize everything and I think the, the appeal of interface design is actually ordering all the pixels uh, on interfaces. That's what got me here and that's what I keep doing it over and over again just to, um, I don't know, I want to organize the world I guess, or the web maybe. I just need to do it. <laughs> it's like a therapy. Um, and that's what brought me here. Just hard on it. I'm Mike, I'm a UI developer at Yahoo and how I got my start was making products for engineers and focusing on the usability aspects and how people interact with them. Uh, I made the transition by taking on small like contract jobs at night and eventually that, that group to become my full-time job. My name is 
Travis. I'm an engineer here at Yahoo, and I got my start uh, pretty traditionally. I was a computer scientist through school. I uh, kind of got hooked by starting my own company, um, kind of in the web space, and then I jumped uh, from startup to startup, uh, doing anything and everything, and then that landed me here at Yahoo. So, so I guess a nugget I'd, I'd like to give to uh, kind of future developers out there would be uh, to kind of explore everything. You know, it, be it kind of front end, back end, everything. Just kind of get your hands in, in all the areas because you never know what you're going to be doing. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Sean. I'm a designer based in San Francisco. I originally started out in New York and loved design and I came to San Francisco, loved it here. Went to school for graphic design, mostly focused on print and I just saw the transition over time that print was not going to always be there. It's between reading and just seeing it in the world. So I went from, started learning about web design then I went on to mobile app design which is not where I'm at now. So one of the biggest things I learned after I got out of school was that, especially as I was transitioning from print to this web and mobile focus, is not to give up because I searched for over a year for a steady job doing odd and end things here and there. And I know a lot of people that have given up in the process doing something similar. And if you're really passionate and love what you do, just keep on doing it. and I'm going to talk about how I kind of became a designer. So in college I was majoring in industrial engineering and oil painting, believe it or not. And right out of college I went to a big consultancy center and worked in their technology labs, which is where I learned about data visualization and kind of gave data visualization its own start at Accenture. And today I'm at a startup called Silicon Valley Data Science and I'm a data visualization expert which involves a lot of front-end design and user experience and just having this huge mass of data that's really complicated, you don't know what stories are in it, and finding those stories and then being able to tell that to an audience. I guess it was a lot of, I was always told engineering is what you have to do, engineering is what you have to do, and I've always loved the arts and kind of tried to straddle both arts and science and data visualization is the closest thing I found that I still get to do, both art and science. So it's been great getting over that and being able to find a, a real job that lets you do that. I would say that the side projects that you're really interested in make a really big difference. They end up affecting your work a lot. Um, I love seeing influences from disciplines that don't necessarily have to do with the main focus. Visualizations that have influences with music, like you can see sheet music uh, design principles kind of flowing into a visualization, things like that. Uh, so I think the biggest tip is continue with those side projects because a lot of them turn out really well and they really influence your work. Hi, my name is Chris. Um, I'm going to tell you about what my aha moment for design was. Um, I think when I was 13, I went to a magnet school where I was studying IT. And at the time, I was really focused on engineering. And the more I was learning, the more I was seeing that engineering was interacting with design. And I think the aha moment for me was when I was looking at a MacBook and its internal components and found out about the logic board and how that allowed us to make computers that were more well designed and practical for use. Um, I was starting to see like we were able to now think of an engineering solution in a more design standpoint and that allowed us to then think about empowering people and how to use computers. And from there I just started following design. Um, whenever I work on things, I, although it may have been engineering complex, I would think about how to make it well designed. And following from there that led to me doing workshops in New York City uh, to learn about design from other peers and then also taking courses at school that focus around that. And eventually that led to me um, following that dream into Silicon Valley. And I'm just in 
come up with that. The advice that I give to young people starting right now is uh, definitely look around for a variety of resources. Um, your friends around you, the internet, books, and just follow your heart in terms of what you want to learn and you'll be able to pursue what you want to pursue. Um, always keep an open mind to that and uh, don't doubt yourself and always create because you want to create. Uh, that, that's what I would <laughs> My name is Saj, and how I got started in design was I actually used to be an engineer. Um, and I was building products in China where uh, we were making these stoves for South Africa. And so what we were doing was we were going through and we were trying to build the perfect home stove uh, for a country we'd never been to. And uh, we made these incredible stoves, and then we sent them all to South Africa, and the product was absolutely sh so uh, we ended up having uh, whole containers full of stoves that we had to bring back. Uh, and the reason was we had no idea how people actually cooked in, in South Africa. So we'd actually never been there. And when we finally found out how people were using these stoves, they were using them on the ground and crouching down in front of them. And what we had done was we had reverse engineered a camping stove, which made no sense whatsoever when you're cooking on the ground. So it was at this moment when I realized there was this thing called design that I didn't really understand so why I understood how to make stuff I didn't really understand how to make it for people so that's what got me into go to go to design school and start doing design lots of times people ask me like what I think indicates whether like a company or a small group is design centered my answer is always how much do they talk to their users and whoever those users may be so for whatever it is that you're making I always recommend just talk to somebody that's actually using it and talk to them as often as possible um, I think the big, biggest barometer for whether somebody's design centered or not is how willing they are to ask questions and show whatever they're making off to the people they're making them for and realize if it's the completely wrong thing to be making. Hi, I'm Shally Nguyen and um, I'm a designer here at Yahoo. Um, I guess that moment for me was mainly when I was just starting doing web, web development, I realized there was a lot of sites that just didn't look good and I, I knew how to make them look better in a way. <laughs> so just getting into it and jumping into design myself as a, as a front end dev, I got really into the design part of it. So decided to take a couple design classes while I was in school. Um, I was originally a business major and um, just got into it and now I'm designing. And I've been designing for the past six, seven, eight years, seven years, something like that. Start designing. Like it's it's so important to just dive in there, you know, redesign your friend's website, redesign, you know, your uncle's website, redesign a website that's out there and already looks good but make it even better. So I think that's that's the way to go. Just jump into all the products and get into Illustrator, Photoshop and make things beautiful. Hi, my name is Andy Law, uh, and the thing that gets me really excited about design and got me started in design was the, the possibilities of it. Um, I really like understanding why people do what they do and why they make the decisions that they make, especially with interacting with uh, an application or a website. Um, so really understanding that and how I can influence decision making through design uh, was something that got me really excited about it. So that's how I got into design. I think young people, uh, especially when they start with design right now, if, if you're coming out of a school, uh, you need practical experience. So whether you're going to you know, actually go out there and get clients or just start out um, you're designing things for your friends like I think that's great uh, go through and, and find tutorials online that interest you design styles that interest you on dribble and try to recreate those uh, maybe don't sell them or anything like that because you might not, not necessarily own it uh, but but try those styles out and see uh, see what those things are to you and see how you can kind of put your own spin on things I really enjoyed going to that meetup and thank you to everyone who let me film them. And that's the thing, right? They would, they would let me film them and that's kind of my, the process that I, like I would talk to them about the subject and what you know, we're doing here at Dev Tips and kind of get them warmed up. And then, you know, I'd kind of interrupt them and say, let me get this on camera. And that was kind of like the, you know, the process. 
But there was one lady there who we were talking to and her answers were so good, I literally forgot to stop her and start recording. And so I'm, I didn't you know, record her saying her name, I'm sorry, I, I really messed up on that one. Luckily, Los Montoya was there helping me out shooting some B-roll and he caught some of her remarks. So I'm sorry that this clip is kind of out of order and not really in the same style as the others, but what she has to say is really worth the watch. So thanks for watching and we're gonna end this video with this gem. I went to university at the University of Illinois, uh -huh. but I wasn't quite sure that I wanted to do design. In fact, I was stuck between design and East Asian languages and cultures. Rather than choosing one, I decided I could do both, which was incredibly reckless, but fun. Um, so I went to... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just telling you this day. This is good. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought that I could do both of them. and. Honestly, I went my entire, my entire senior year without necessarily choosing one in particular. But I think I sort of fell in love with design earlier than I knew. Um, it had been a summer, I was off of school, I had really nothing to do, and my stepmother, a graphic designer, I asked her, I was like, how can I better design? I don't know anything about these programs. How do I learn in design and illustrator and Photoshop? And so she sent me with a task. She gave me the Chicago Tribune. She gave me the newspaper. And she said, design this front page. Replicate it entirely on the computer. <laughs> wow. And so I looked at this thing. I was like, what the hell am I doing? So I opened up InDesign. And through the next two days, I spent the entirety of my time going through these online tutorials, making these mistakes, just creating this entire hodgepodge of whatever you might even call a layout. But at the end of it, I had created this near perfect replica of the Chicago Tribune, complete with photos and all. And knowing that I had created this thing that other professionals at one point had created, regardless of how long it took me, was so incredibly powerful. The fact that I had made this myself. And I think the power of these things enabling you to create such wonderful products was something that really hooked me early on. Yeah. Fun! Sometimes I try to warm people up. But that like, was... <laughs> like, you just, Bam. you do it. <laughs> That's awesome. So what advice would you give to someone? Um, what advice would I give? Someone just starting out. Two points. Always get a contract. Always have your clients sign a contract, no matter how young you are. And second, find a mentor if you can. Because, yeah, find a mentor. Regardless of the position between you and this mentor, no matter how fantastic you think this person is and how terrible you might think you are as such a lowly young designer, your mentor will help you out more than you ever anticipated. And they're glad to help too. I've learned so much from strong mentors in my life that I don't know where I would be without them. Yeah. Totally on that. Wow. Look at that. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem.